Hey everyone, Andy Rafael from eTechnics.com here. And as you know, AMD have just released their new X470 chipset. And along with that comes a whole host of new motherboards. Today, we're looking at the ASUS ROG Strix X470 F Gaming. This is set to replace the previous X370 F Gaming, but it adds a few new features into the mix. So let's jump in and take a look. First up, let's see what we get in the box. The X470F Gaming comes with a manual, driver CD, stickers, a thank you note, a door hanger to notify people when you're deep in your favorite game, a cable mod discount coupon code, cable ties, an SLI HB bridge, four SATA cables, an RGB cable, and an addressable RGB cable, and finally some mounting screws for the M.2 slots. Built on the ATX form factor, this board is finished in a black and stealthy style. The heatsink is covered in reflective writing, kind of like buzzword graffiti, which gives it a pretty unique look if I do say so. Lighting wise, I have to say it could be better. The only zone that has any lighting is the top of the IO shield where it meets the heatsink. This is fully RGB and can be controlled with the AuraSync software, along with any other compatible devices such as memory and graphics cards. Although you can hook up LED strips to the board via addressable LED headers, it would have been nice to see more onboard lighting zones, and it does fall a little bit short in these areas. 18 months ago, AMD claimed a four year minimum lifespan for the AM4 socket, and that means backwards and forwards compatibility. As such, this board can be used with all Summit Ridge, Raven Ridge with their built-in Vega graphics, and of course, Pinnacle Ridge second generation CPUs. Power is provided by an 8 plus 2 phase PWM design, and there is also a single 8 pin connector providing the CPU socket with power. This board features high quality solid capacitors designed to withstand temperatures from minus 55 degrees C to 105 degrees C, which ASUS claim is a range that's 110% better than the industry standard, while the patented DigiPlus VRM provides smooth power delivery directly to the CPU. We have two heat sinks surrounding the socket. One is incorporated into the IO panel cover, which helps reduce ESD. The only RGB on the board is featured here on the strip and the ROG logo. Another heat sink flows from this one into the M.2 shroud and towards the PCH. Some will like the graffiti like style while others won't. It's a subjective thing, but I've got to admit, I kind of like it to be honest. It doesn't light up, but it does reflect to give a little bit of color. One odd thing here is ASUS have put fabric on the board, a bit like the tag that you'd find on a t-shirt or a pair of trainers. Clearly someone thought this was a good idea, but I just don't get it. The X470F Gaming supports up to 64 gig of DDR4-3466 dual channel memory. It also boasts overcurrent protection with onboard resettable fuses, protecting all connection ports and DRAM modules against damage for an extended lifespan. You may be able to push your RAM a little bit further, but obviously this depends on your modules, CPU, and how good you are at overclocking. In common with the rest of the F-Series motherboards from ASUS, this one doesn't have any sort of onboard overclocking buttons or switches or controls. If you do want these types of features, you're going to have to maybe spend a little bit more and go up to the Crosshair series of motherboards. There are seven fan headers on offer here, two for the CPU fan, one to the right for the system fan, two more system fan headers at the bottom of the board, and two headers in the middle. Scanning along the front panel headers, we find HD audio, TPM, and our two RGB headers, including one addressable among the usual other assortment of connectors, as well as a COM port? Who still uses these? There is also a further RGB header in the middle of the board next to the two fan headers. For your storage needs, the board provides six SATA 6 gig per second ports, a USB 3.1 Gen 2 front panel connector port, a USB 3.0 header, and two USB 2.0 ports for legacy devices. There are two M.2 slots, one of which is a Type 22110 PCIe 3.0 X4 slot, and the other of which is a Type 2280 PCIe 3.0 X2 slot. As we've already said, one of the M.2 slots comes complete with a large aluminium heatsink, which is obviously a useful feature to have. Moving on to the expansion slots, we find two PCIe 3.0 X16 slots, but one does operate at X8 speeds. There is also a PCIe 2.0 X16 slot running at X4 speeds, and three PCIe 2.0 X1 slots on offer. 
Nvidia two-way SLI and AMD three-way Crossfire X are also both supported. The rear connectors are protected by a pre-installed IO shield cover, making it easier when installing the board into a chassis. In terms of ports, we have five USB 3.1 Gen 1 type A ports, a display port, which is nice to see, and a HDMI port for if you're using an AMD Raven Ridge processor with built-in Vega graphics. We have a USB 3.1 Gen 1 type C port and two USB 3.1 Gen 2 type A ports. The X470F Gaming gives us Intel 1211-80 gigabit ethernet, and strangely, a PS2 keyboard mouse combo port. On the audio side of things, we see an optical SB diff out and five Supreme FX 8 channel audio 3.5 mil jacks. ASUS have used their Supreme FX 8 channel HD audio technology for some years now, and with each iteration, they improve it. It uses the S1220A codec, and the board comes with dual headphone amps that should definitely maximize your audio quality. Okay, enough about the features and the design. Let's talk about overclocking. We managed to overclock the Ryzen 7 2700X to 4.2 gigahertz at 1.4 volts. Sadly, this is pretty standard based on the other boards that we've tested from competitor brands. We managed to do all of this on the stock air cooler that AMD provided, the Rafe Prism, which in its own right is pretty good. With higher voltages, you may be able to increase the overclock maybe just that little bit, but we wouldn't recommend doing it on a 24 seven system. Overclocking is also a little bit easier on X470 compared to the previous generation chipset. But enough of that, let's jump in and take a look at the benchmarks. Priced on launch at around £180 in the UK and $215 in the US, we think this board represents a significant jump in functionality from the previous range of X370 boards, while also maintaining a good price point. In common with all new X470 boards, you'll be able to make use of some of the really neat features if you combine it with one of the second generation Ryzen CPUs. These include XFR2 and Precision Boost 2, which automatically tailor the performance of your CPU to your operating and thermal environment by increasing performance on the fly. The visual styling is a bit hit and miss. Some people are going to love it, some people are going to hate it. Personally, I do like the graffiti on there, but I would have maybe liked to have seen a little bit more RGB. But we can't have everything, so there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. Smash that like button, give us a comment below, and we'll see you in the next video. Until then, see you later.